we know what we want from them. The question I'm gonna ask you today is what do they want from you? You've got their side of the equation, the employer and the employee side of the equation, and when both parties get their needs met, you know what you got? Engagement. We've got half of our workforce that's actively disengaged. So we'll settle for engagement. Now I said, there's gotta be something more. There's gotta be something more than just engaged employees. You know, people who would work for us the way we would work for us. Because I don't want anyone working for me who's just engaged. You know what I want? I want someone who's on fire. On fire while they're at work. That's an on fire employee. That's somebody like Benita. I like working here. This is who and what I am. And I'm looking forward to tomorrow. If your audience is comprised of business owners, leaders, managers, executives, franchisees, people who someone else calls boss, and you want to show those people how to recruit, train, manage, motivate, and retain the best of the emerging workforce. An on fire workplace culture where employees are inspired to work harder, to perform better, and to stay longer, then we should talk. How many of you would actually buy a piece of technology without first consulting your child? <laughs> How many of you get dressed? Go in front of your child and say, how do I look? And if they say, eh, you go change. <laughs> so when I talk about they, I'm not just talking about young people. I'm talking about the millennial mindset. And that mindset sometimes is in the, the body of a 40 or a 50 year old person who are tethered to their technology and can't make eye contact. So millennial is no longer an age demographic. In fact, it's a mindset. I just found Eric's talk this morning so inspirational and motivational. There's so many little nuggets that he says and little phrases that just make you stop and think and go, I can do that. What do you need to improve in your job? Wow, Mr. Mayor, that's a powerful question. Can you, can you tell me how that plays out? He says, sure. Let's just say you're the housekeeping manager at a, at a Fairfield Inn in Dubuque, Iowa. And you pull your housekeepers together that day and you cover those three things. You say, well, here's what we're doing well. Here's something we need to work on. And by the way, what do you need to do your, your job better? And one of those housekeepers would tell you, boy, we could sure use more linens on the third floor. Doggone it, put more linens on the third floor. Because people will stay in a job where they feel like they're being listened to. I love what he has to say because his messages, the information always touches my head, my heart, and my funny bone. You know what it takes to be successful in your business. Do the people who work for you? Because oftentimes they're confused. They don't know. We assume they know, but they don't know. So you would know what those five words were on your list if you were out of here and the people who worked in your organization were in here. And I said, here's what I want you to do. I want you to tell me what it takes to be successful for you in your place of business where you work. What is your manager, your owner? What do they want out of you? I only want five words. If they stopped and gave me five words, how close would their list be to your list? Would it be exactly the same, kind of the same, or as different as East is from West? Because if you're not on the same page, you know what you got? You got a mess. Eric's uh, presentation was ex very exciting for me. I'm a former Disney executive and a television station executive, and he was spot on in identifying how to, how to change a culture and every day, the CEO punches in. In fact, all the C-level employees punch in. CFO, CMO, all of them, they all punch in. Doesn't that sound weird? Wouldn't we only let hourly people? See, here's the way they look at it. They go, hey, whatever we ask of those people, we're gonna do ourselves. Everybody clocks in. Here's the thing. The workday starts at 8.30 a.m. in the Mars Corporation. But if you punch in at 8.29 or earlier, you get a 10% bonus on the day that you're there. Think about that. 10% bonus for punching in early. They don't slap people for being late, they reward people for being early. No wonder they're growing like crazy. You see, we have all been idle. We have all been lucky. And we've all cheated. 
Don't tell me you haven't. If you've driven one mile an hour over the posted speed limit, you've cheated. <laughs> and for those of you angels near, say, well, I've never done that. Have you ever torn a tag off a mattress or a pillow? Because it clearly says on there, do not remove under penalty of the law. <laughs> where we want is, we want our people to, to know what to do and to do it. And that's where the leadership part happens. Because that's what you and I are, my friends. And that's our call, to move people over and up, up and over, so that they know what to do when they do it. And that means, first and foremost, we've got to be standing in that quadrant 24-7, 365. And we've got to reach down and we've got to pull people up into that quadrant. And we have to do it every single day because gravity works against us. Gravity is going to pull people back down if you just turn your back for a minute. When you find a speaker that has the right kind of content and an amazing delivery uh, and a whole lot of laughs, uh, that's a home run. Our group absolutely loved him, but more significantly than that, they took away things that they're going to use immediately. It doesn't get much better than that. Now, if you like what you've seen, contact me and we'll work together to create an amazing experience. Thanks for watching. You guys are awesome. Thank you. Peter. Josie. Thank you, Josie. Appreciate it. God bless you. Thanks, Tim. You guys are awesome. Thank you. Right on. Thank you very much. Awesome.